Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, sorry. interesting. You know when you say that, it reminds me of, for example, there's books that we study on the matters of creed. Uh, there's two books. There's Aqid al-Tahawi and Aqid al Yeah. So these are books that tells us the doctrine of Islam, who God is. So we have something called um, we worship Allah. Like for example, we single out God in His lordship. And we single him out in his worship and we affirm his names and his attributes. So when he was speaking, I was, it was reminding me of the things that we studied, the things that we went through. Because you said a lot of stuff, yeah? So for example, you do not, you reject the concept of the Trinity. You do not believe God is like his creation, yeah? Uh, you know, you, 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 you believe in his oneness. Um, so when you're talking, it reminds me of Islam. So we have a agreement. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Come to common terms with the people of the book that we worship no other than God. So, so far we're on the right track. It seems that we are both coming to good terms of worshipping God alone. You said one statement, I just wanted to clarify. You said that God revealed himself to three million Israelites. Yes. What do you mean by revealed himself? So what that means is that God um, made some sort of speech. Yeah. We're not sure what it means when God speaks, but it means something, we just don't know what it means. Okay, um, so did he reveal himself or did he speak? He spoke. We're not sure what, spe what God speaking actually sounds like. We're That's sure interesting because we, we believe God speaks. Right. Yeah? And so, we believe the Quran is his word. Right. So, uncreated, uncreated word, yeah? So what we believe is that whenever Whenever the Torah yeah. talks about God in physical terms, like he speaks or yeah. he has a hand or yeah. he regrets or anything like that, yeah. it's really an anthropomorphism because we can't understand God in any way. Mm. Um, and, and therefore, the only way we can understand him is through human terms. Okay, so when you say, for example, when God speaks, or for example, God, we believe, for example, God speaks, we affirm that he has a hand, yeah, but it's the way it befits his majesty. So for example, we have certain groups in Islam who deny this concept, yeah, which we believe that it's a whole different topic, yeah, that there's innovation, yeah. So for example, we say that God has a hand the way it befits his majesty. But a lot of them, what happens is they use their mind over the text. So we say, look, if the Quran and the Sunnah, if Allah affirms his self, himself and his attributes to us, which we affirm, then we accept it. We say God has a hand the way it befits his majesty. We don't, but what happens is certain fractions, groups in Islam, they say, oh, if God has a hand, he should have a limb. If he has a limb, so you're laughing. You know why you're laughing? Because you, do, you know we don't mean that, yes. right? Yes. Exactly. So because we believe it's yes. anthropomorphized. If there were some brothers here, they'll say you're a Salafi. Yani you're on the right thing, uh, uh, ideology regarding creed, yeah? And that's important because we go back to how the Sahaba, the Salaf understood it. And we say, look, we go with what they're saying. So when you smirked, I, I find it very interesting because he was like, come on, you even know that when God Almighty has a speech and for example, his hand or be it his shin, it's not it's the, the same way. as what we say speech. Exactly. It's not the same. Exactly. So we affirm, we affirm that he does, but the way it befits his majesty. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So it's very similar. So because when you said he revealed himself to three million Israelites, I wanted to know what do you mean by reveal? Did he show himself? Of course not. He's okay, not exactly. So, so far, it seems like we have a lot of commonalities. Where do we differ? Why, why are we, why, why, do, why do we have, uh, why like, do we have two different religions? We yeah. have two different religions for one reason. And the reason is because we believe that at Sinai, there was given not only a written law, but an oral law, which told you to, how to interpret it. Okay. And you don't believe that. And because you don't believe that, you don't believe that the prophet Malachi was the last of the prophets and you believe that the prophets could continue after that. Mm. Whereas we have an oral tradition that, that, that was passed down that Malachi was the last prophet and therefore we can't accept any prophets after him. Okay. Do you so that's you, really where we split up. Okay, so far like also one thing I just want to clarify as well, do you believe that God rested on the seventh day? In an anthropomorphized way, in a way that befits his majesty as you would say, yes. Okay, we we believe that, for example, we have something called Ayatul Kursi, yeah? It's a very powerful uh, verse in the Quran. What does it mean? Ayatul Kursi. For example, let me get you the translation and we'll read it because it's, it's very important when it comes to this matter of... Um, oh, you dropped something. Oh, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yes, one second. Let me get you it because I want to read it for you. Okay. And... Because it's very important it, it touches on this topic, yeah? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, it's the Quran, it's Surah Baqarah. Ah, it's a long one. Yeah, it's long. It's about the cow. I haven't finished it yet. Really? That's good, yeah. you're reading it, yeah? Yes. Yes, may, I, may God guide you. I yes. don't know any Arabic. I've started learning the alphabet. Me too, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly learning too. Okay, so let's go to verse 255. Well, yet. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Ayatul Kursi is something that we read, it's a powerful dua. It says the following, yeah? And tell me if you relate with this as a Jewish person, yeah? Allah, God, there is no God but He, the living, the all sustaining, neither dozing off, tiredness overtakes Him, nor sleep. To Him belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth, all that is on the earth, who can intercede with Him without His permission. He knows what is before them and what is behind them, while they encompass nothing of his knowledge except what he wills. His kursi chair extends to the heavens and the earth, and it does not weary either and it does not weary him to look after them. So here there's something that says in the beginning, he does not get tired. Yeah. No sleep overtakes him. Yes. So now even though you're saying that he, he doesn't sleeps get tired, but not and yet he did rest. Yeah. He doesn't sleep, as it says in Psalms. Behold, um, the, 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 behold the, the guardian of Israel does not sleep and does not slumber. And yet we know oh, okay. that he... That's that, interesting. That, and yet we know in Genesis that he did something on the seventh day which was called rest. We don't know what that means because of course it's just anthropomorphism. It's, it's, it's something... It's, we're ascribing physical attributes to God even though we know that he's not physical. So okay, so what it's, God's it's, rest is, is not the same as what our rest Okay, so in the same way that God's speech is not the same as our speech. God's hand is not the same as our hand. And the way the God exists way. is not the way we exist. Exactly. Exactly. Now, um, when you said, for example, um, God, oh, when he said he, he rested, can we say that God willed certain things, but on the seventh day he didn't will? Like, meaning, like, can you, is, is that what you mean? Like, he, he just didn't do... I, I'm not... Because God is above our understanding, I don't know what it actually means when it says okay. He rested. I, I don't know. Okay. I know that it's. That I know that it says that God ceased from doing on the seventh day. I know that. Okay. Um, whatever that means. Yeah. I know it says God rested on the seventh day. I know that it says God sanctified the seventh day. Okay. But we don't know what these things mean. All we can do is relate to to the anthropomorphism that is being said. Okay. Okay. But no, that's no problem. That, that gives us a bit of an understanding. Okay. So, so far, we can say that we both believe in the oneness of God. We do not, we deny the whole Trinity, the whole worshipping. Now, as Muslims, where do we stand in your religion? What are we? I know we're the Gentiles, but do we have a belonging in the hereafter? Um, and also the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What do you guys see him as? Like, like um, if you just tell us. So, the, um, so in our, so we, uh, one of our great rabbis was called the Rambam, known in English as Maimonides. Uh, he, was a, he was a rabbi who was, grew up in Spain and had to move um, um, to, um, to uh, 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 yes, and had to move to Morocco and then eventually Egypt and then Israel. And he said that the that, that the, those who follow the Nazarene, i.e., the Christians, and those who follow the the madman, which is how he referred to Muhammad, because he thought he referred to him as mad, um, are, 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 have have the, have been sent to this world by God to spread the principle of one God to the pagans. So we believe that you have a very important purpose in this world, that you are, that, that I mean, you, you went to India, you went to Africa, and you, uh, and you turned all these pagans into people who believe in one God, and that's an incredible thing. So then how can Prophet Muhammad be classified as mad when he's rid the, a lot of nations so, of idol worshipism? Because because we believe that he was a false prophet. We believe that, 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 that God did not actually speak to him. We believe that because, uh, that because the Quran contradicts the Torah, that therefore the, uh, the Quran must not be true. But we do believe that the message of Muhammad is a true message. Okay, do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet for the Gentiles? Um, no. You don't believe that? Some, I heard some Jewish said There was believe. one rabbi yeah. who, who wrote it in his book, but he lived at a time when Jews were being forcibly converted to Islam in Yemen. So I don't think we can take what he says 
at face value. If, if it's true what you're saying that they were persecuted, because a lot of Jews did live in harmony in Muslim lands where they yes. were suffering persecution, um, if that is true. Now, the thing is this, if we prove to you the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger, would you accept it? If you were to prove it, then sure. So would you denounce Judaism and become a Muslim? If it was via logical process, then of course. Okay, that's what that shows you honesty, and that's 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 good. What kind of proof would you require in order to, um, to like for us to show you that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was just the fulfilling the message of Moses and uh, the rest? We we'll believe in Jesus. You don't. Um, so, what evidence would you require that would get you thinking? What is it? You need to give me a. So, yeah. So the evidence I would need is as follows. Um, and it's based on the following. I'm going to have to introduce it. Yes. We as Jews, as I said, believe that our ancestors had this mass revelation, three million people at Sinai. We heard God speak to us. We were given the Torah. We were given the oral Torah and the written Torah. And the oral Torah said that the last Gentile prophet was Bilam. And after that prophecy left the Gentiles. What was his name? Bilam. Bilam. Or, or in English, Balaam. Uh, I don't know how they pronounce it in English. I, I, I've always been taught is as Bilam. Okay. Um, and uh, spelt in English B A L A A M. It's brought in, it mentioned in the Book of Numbers. Okay. Um, so the oral law he says that after his death, prophecy left the Gentiles. Yeah. And the rabbis said that after Malachi, after the prophet Malachi, Malachi, prophecy left the Jews. So at that point, prophecy has left the world. Now, unless you can prove to me that our oral law is wrong, then I would not believe that Islam is true. Because Islam can only be true if prophecy had not left and not left Islam. Now, there is an additional point that I would not believe Islam unless you also show to me that the written Torah is also not true. Why? Because the Quran and the written Torah disagree on, I mean, I've found a list of five different points, but those five points are enough to say that one of them, you know, they, they, they contradict each other. So unless you were to tell, to prove to me that the written and oral Torahs are both not true, then I would not believe Islam. Okay, so you did say that the last Gentile prophet was Bilam. So does that you need to accept that God sent prophets that were Gentiles? Yes, God sent prophets that were Gentiles. Okay, so now can God send another prophet who is a Gentile because the children of Israel broke their covenant with him and therefore God Almighty chose from the line of Ibrahim's two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. And in the line of Isaac, we, we affirm those prophets. And then what happened is because you broke the covenant with God, God, as a punishment, chose the prophet Muhammad, who was because you said that there was Gentile prophets before. So what happened is in the lineage of Ishmael, uh, which Prophet Muhammad's lineage goes to, is that he was the final prophet who came to affirm to the Jews and to the Christians and to the whole world that he is the final messenger because he comes with the law. Now you said that there's five things that disagree with the Torah from the Quran. Well, if you get that list out, the thing is God Almighty. It's not that God changes his mind. It's that God, when God sends laws and sanctions, he does it to test people. So God might say, for example, that in the Old Testament, you're not allowed to eat camel. Sorry, four, four. You're not allowed to eat camel meat, right? Yeah, we're not allowed to eat camel. Okay, so when I confronted the black Israelites about four or five years ago, which they believe you guys are fake and that's vice versa. Yeah. When I confronted them, they said, oh no, Islam is false because we are to, told I, that I, we... I need to leave at half past to get to synagogue. Okay, three minutes left. Finished. Three yeah. minutes left, but we can continue next week. Okay. So the thing is, they said no, because in our book says you can't eat camel meat. In your book, uh, not in the book, in the Sunnah, it says that you can, yeah? So I say these are little petty issues. But what I would say is that, what? animals. Okay, okay. When is the marriage uh, soon. <laughs> after, 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 after. Three minutes, three minutes. Yeah, so the thing is, sorry. So the thing is, um, uh, sorry, I lost my track. Sorry. Yeah, so the thing is that, if God Almighty sent down prophets that were Gentiles, if the children of Israel broke the covenant, God, for God to punish them, as a lot, like if you think it logically, sends another prophet, is that not plausible? Is it plausible? Yes, but does it befit His Majesty to change it? To, 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 to but it's say, not changing. To, to, to say that prophecy has left, uh, has left the Gentiles, and then to go back on that. 
I don't believe that befits his majesty. Okay, no, but the thing is, if the children of Israel have broke the covenant with him and have not listened to him, but and God said, God said, sorry, to interrupt, no, God said that, that even if we break the covenant, he will not abandon us. If we return to God, then he will, it says in Deuteronomy 30, if we return to God, then God will accept us back. You're right, I agree with you. Can you turn back to God via a new prophet the, from the Gentiles, who is from the lineage of Ibrahim, السلام, the prophet Abraham, and can you not turn back to God via him? Because the, the Jews, uh, the Jews in, um, in Medina, yeah? I forgot, what's the other name in Medina? Christ. Uh, uh, yeah, Yadrib, Yadrib, yeah? Before there was Jews, Banu Khurayza, Banu Nadir, Banu Kainuka, there was Jews that were lived, yeah? They rejected the Prophet because they were waiting in those lands for the final Prophet to come. And they were waiting, the Messiah, well, they were waiting for the final Prophet or the Islamic Messiah to come. And they knew the Prophet like they knew the back of their hand. The only reason they rejected him is because he's not a Jew. Is that a correct method? Because they had a right, they had an opportunity to correct their affairs with God by following a messenger, even if he's a Gentile. Because to say, oh no, he has to be an Israelite, is asking God to pick and choose. Like, oh no, we, isn't that... Uh, one simple, I'm so sorry. Simple, I'll, I'll ask, make it simple. Because you need to go to synagogue. Yeah, you, got, you, got, you got one minute, yeah, I've, 15 I've, seconds. I've, I'm sorry, minutes ago. Okay, I've, can I just really ask this question late. quickly? Isn't it, can, could have not the children of Israel come to God, get closer to God through a Gentile prophet? That is a true prophet. Could they? Yes. Why did they not? Why did they not? Because they don't believe he's a true prophet. Because okay, but if we prove that he was, if they knew he was, okay. We'll have to call you next week. Okay, say, okay. I really have to get to okay, Josh, if, they, if they knew he was and they rejected him, is that right or wrong? If they knew he was a true prophet? If they had known he was a true prophet, then they would be wrong to go okay. against him. Okay. Okay. But I don't believe they knew that he was a true prophet. Okay. Because I believe it was a false prophet. Okay, Josh, okay. thank you very much. I, I look forward to continuing this. I'll be here next week. I'll be here next week. Nice talking to you. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you. So, guys, um, as we. Is it recording? Yeah, so that was a really nice discussion. You had to go to the synagogue, uh, which is understandable. Um, it's very important for us to have a dialogue and discussion with uh, Christians, Jews, and it's very important that Josh is a nice gentleman, he's uh, polite, well spoken, etc. Uh, he believes that the, the Prophet Sallallahu is a false prophet. Uh, but alhamdulillah, we know he's the true prophet, alhamdulillah. But obviously him stating that, he's stating that because he's not aware, he's not, alhamdulillah, the, the message hasn't reached him. And that's what we're trying to convey, inshallah. And he did say, if he is, he would accept him, inshallah. That's between him and his Lord. Uh, but uh, yeah, so yeah, he expressed himself and we had different But he said some very profound things. So brothers and sisters, till next time, inshallah, uh, come visit us if you have any questions or answers for both Muslims, Christian, Jews, Hindu, Sikh, whatever you name it. From Salam Kona and your brother Ali, Assalamu Alaikum, Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.